Welcome to CSE Guru. In this session, we will discuss about the topic left factoring. Left factoring is an important concept in compiler design. It is a grammar transformation that helps to convert the given grammar into a suitable form to pass with the predictive parsing. It is the process of converting a non-deterministic grammar to a deterministic grammar. The basic idea is when more than one alternative production is available to expand for a non-terminal with the same prefix, then the parser will get confused which production to apply for the non-terminal in order to derive the correct input string. So, to avoid this confusion, the parser will implement a left factoring concept to factor out the common prefixes used in the productions. Normally, in the backtracking concept, the parser will choose the first production to expand for the non-terminal. Suppose, the first production fails to derive the correct input string. In that situation, the parser will choose the second alternative production and it will try to derive the correct input string. So, this process continues until it derives the correct input string. But the main drawback in backtracking is it is a time consuming process and sometimes it needs to backtrack even to the start symbol of the grammar. For example, if you are considering the production S yes derives S A B or S A C. It consists of two productions with the common prefix. So the first production is S A B and the second production is S A C. So, if you are considering here, these two production is having the common prefix SA and the unique symbol in the first production is B and the unique symbol in the second production is C. So, if you are considering this production, the parser will get confused which is the right production to implement for the non-terminal S in order to derive the correct input string. So, the parser will always choose the first production and it will try to derive the input string. Suppose if the first production fails to derive the correct input string, in that case it will choose the second production. So it is a time consuming process. So to avoid this disadvantage, the left factoring concept will factor out the common prefixes by rewriting the A productions in order to make the right choice. So left factoring is nothing but factoring out the common prefixes present in the given grammar for each production. So this is the general format of left factoring. Consider there are two A productions of the form A derives alpha beta 1 or alpha beta 2 or alpha beta 3 likewise and R1, R2, R3 likewise. This alpha represents the common prefixes used in more than one production and beta 1, beta 2 are the unique symbols in each production. And this R1, R2 are completely different productions. That is, it is not having the common prefixes. So, when the production is of this general form, A derives alpha beta 1 or alpha beta 2 or alpha beta 3 or R1 or R2 or R3. Instead of this production, we will factor out the common prefixes used in the production with the help of these two productions. A derives alpha A dash. This alpha represents the common prefix. So the common prefixes we are combining it into one production. R1, R2, R3 are nothing but the completely different productions which is not having this common prefix. And the second production is A dash derives beta 1 or beta 2 or beta 3 or beta 4 likewise. So, if you are considering here, the first production will consist of the common prefixes and the second production will consist of the unique symbols in each production. So, if you are implementing these two productions, we will factor out the common prefixes. Next, we will discuss one example for left factoring. The given grammar is S derives IETS or IETSES or E and E derives B. So, if you are considering the second production is free of left factoring and if you are considering the first production, the first two productions of S yes consist of the common prefixes that is IETS. Yes. So, this IETS yes is nothing but alpha and here there is no unique symbol. 
So we will add epsilon here. So this epsilon is nothing but beta 1 and here in the second production of ES, this ES is nothing but beta 2 and this A is nothing but R1. So whenever the production is of the form A derives alpha beta 1 or alpha beta 2 or R1 or R2. We will factor out the common prefixes alpha by using these two productions. That is the first production is A derives alpha A dash or R1 or R2 and A dash derives beta 1 or beta 2. So instead of this S production, we will implement these two productions. That is A here A is nothing but S. So the first production is S derives, first we will write alpha. So alpha is nothing but I E T S. So S derives alpha A dash. A dash is nothing but S dash or the other productions which is nothing but R1, R2, R3 likewise. So here only one production that is A. R1 is A. And next production is A dash derives beta 1 or beta 2. So here S yes dash derives beta 1 in the first production is epsilon and beta 2 in the second production is ES. So instead of this S productions, we will rewrite the production as S yes derives IETS S yes dash or A and S yes dash derives epsilon or ES. So the final grammar is S yes derives I E T S S dash or E and S dash derives epsilon or ES. And the second production is free of left factoring. So we can write as it is that is E derives B. So if you are implementing this grammar instead of this grammar, we will factor out the common prefixes and we will avoid the backtracking concept. Thank you for watching this video.